but crucially, the most important thing was that they recognised that religion and the clergy were the enemies of reason, women's rights and women's emancipation. And whatever euphemisms they felt constrained to use, when blasphemy was a capital offence and could destroy reputations, there is no hiding the fact that these women recognised the effect that religion and belief in God had on women. They truly had no gods, no masters. And as I said, you'll not be surprised, therefore, uh, that this book uh, is so little known. Those are a few of the labels I've put in, because whenever I see a label, I think, oh, I must, I must, I must, I must read that, I must say that, I must, I must find somebody to say this to. Let Your Women Keep Silence. This was written by Matilda Jocelyn Gage in 1893. Women have played such a critical role in the move away from religious belief and dogma because organised religion has been the principal enemy of women's rights. Out of sheer self-defence, women have a have been among the most impassioned critics of the Church and among the most ardent supporters of the constitutional principle of separation of Church and State. Among the most damaging, influential and damaging Bible verses about women. Unto women, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and conception, and sorrow shalt thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Genesis. The one from Exodus. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Corinthians. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of every one, every woman is the man, and the head of what Christ is God. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither is the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. And so it goes on. American Jezebels, they were called. Mary Wollstonecraft herself said, um, sorry, the, uh, in, in the interest of, uh, it, this is a very big book. But before I go any further, I want to just tell you how clever Annie Laurie Gaylor was in, in producing it. Sorry, can not stand up? Each person is on its own. It's such an easy book to read. There's a picture. There's a quotation, one of their most famous quotations, their, their, their dates. A short bi biography. Their major uh, influences, their major attainments. And with all of them, uh, one of their most important or censored um, writings. Some of which have never been written before they appeared in this book. So as I say, it's, e it's extremely easy to read, so you haven't got a great tone to wade through. I've lost the page with, with Mary Wollstonecraft. Ella Gibson, the ungodly woman. Christianity is an insult to the wisdom of the 19th century. To place before its progress and development a leader, ruler, king, saviour, God, whose knowledge was less than a modern five-year-old schoolgirl, is an outrage upon humanity. Ella Gibson wrote a book called The Godly Women of the Bible in, 18, in the 1870s. The Gospel of Humiliation. Lucy N. Coleman, she was extremely, extremely influential. She wrote uh, The Woman's Bible. Right, I'm trying to, trying to pick pages where I've actually got something up there. What part of the but man and marriage, the Catholic world, folly, the ancient polling booth, anti-slavery address, let us withdraw our might, M-I-T-E, the greatest humbug, this is from Annie Co um, uh, um, Katie Stanton, 
Stanton's first remarks against clergy and scoldings of devout women appeared in her address at the Seneca Hall's Falls Convention, naming the Immaculate Priesthood, first among transgressors of the unprincipled male professions, launching a recurrent theme against one of the greatest humbugs of the day, the so-called Education Society, in which women in sewing circles paid for the education of young men for the ministry, who later would take to the pulpit to con condemn these same women. Emma Martin wrote, sorry, uh, I don't, you, you probably won't recognise the name, George Jacob Holyoke, it's one of the, um, the famous uh, originators of the secularist movement, and he wrote of Emma Martin, beautiful in expression, quick in wit, strong in will, eloquent in speech, coherent in conviction, and of a stainless character, she was incomparable among public women. She was one of the few among the early advocates of English socialism who saw that the combat against religion could not be confined to an attack on forms of faith, to a mere comparison of creeds. And she attacked, and she attached only a secondary importance to the abuses of Christianity when she saw that the whole was an abuse of history, reason and morality. And that's very interesting because in discussing religion it's very very common for people to try and drag you into comparing one religion for another this is part of the of the tapestry of those of us who discuss atheism on a serious level on a regular basis and they the purpose of doing this is to detract from the the basis of all these religions and the effect they have. The first person in the book is Mary Wollstonecraft, Anne Newport Boyle, who wrote Missionaries. She was scathing about missionaries. When do you ever, he he ever hear anybody these days scathe about missionaries? And yet if you look at history, if you look at the Congo and other African countries, if you look at South America, the atrocities that were committed in the name of, of, of missionary work in Tasmania, in, in Namibia, the most outrageous uh, uh, slaughter went on of indigenous peoples if they refused to convert to Christianity. 